Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Peak and Flow podcast. My name is David Nixon and today this is yet again part of the Boss Fit 30 series. Today I want to talk about refocusing. So if you've been listening to these podcasts uh, daily up to this point, you should be about halfway through the 30 days, give or take, uh, and it may be time to just check in, take some stock and see where you're at. Maybe a little a little uh, refocus for you. So what can commonly happen for individuals, with, especially with a program like this, because they have this sort of hangover or PTSD of 30-day challenges and I have to do everything correct and bang on and right and sprint. And that's just not life. It's just not sustainable. Really, these 30 days are about having paradigm shifts that give you significant shifts down in 12 months' time, in five years' time, in 20 years' time. So the shifts that we can make in these 30 days are profound and significant, yet we have to be able to go through that and go through the challenges that we face both internally and externally throughout the process. And so this podcast is really important for people that, that are used to starting strong. They get to a point where usually it's like, oh, I started strong, but life got in the way. And they might have this monkey mind kind of creeping in. The challenge with this stage is that if you don't break through this stage, then you're sort of forever in this self-sabotage loop. And I'm going to talk a bit about self-sabotage today, but you kind of get stuck there and then let yourself down and off you go. And people do that at all stages. People do that like people that are just breaking through to high levels of sport, people that are you know, struggling to get off the couch, uh, mums and dads that are trying to get back into fit. People do it at all different stages. So it's not unique to just people that are haven't been training or, you know, whatever the case might be, it happens at different stages. If you allow yourself, we can shift from starting strong to finishing strong, because we don't want to start strong, and I'll talk to that in a minute, to understanding that life doesn't get in the way, life is the way, there isn't anything around life, this is part of it, you got to figure it out as you go through it. It's not going, because here's the thing, when someone goes, life gets in the way, they're expecting to be able to get and maintain results without life. It's, it's separate to their actual normal life. And so even when someone's saying life gets in the way, they're actually separating these two things. But they're not separate. They're, they're, they're fundamentally interrelated. And so our ability to see that they're interrelated rather than seeing them as parts allows us to move through that. And then we want to be able to go from, from monkey mind to car mind or from monkey to monk. Right. And our ability to do that as well is sort of, there's a couple of practices that I'm going to offer them to you today. There's, there's many practices actually in many works, but regardless, the ability to go at this point where there's a bit of resistance, it's easy for old beliefs and frames and thoughts to creep up, but that's the monkey mind. And our ability to see through that is crucial because it means that we get to move through it rather than identify to it. And if we do this, we can break free of old patterns and level up. We can move to the next stage. If we don't do this, then we kind of stay in the same loop. So here's a couple of key things that I'd offer you to take on as, let's call it a paradigm shift. One is don't start strong, start simple. Start simple, but more importantly, just start. And so what can happen here is individuals have this idea of like, I need to hit an hour session, I need to go for a 10K run, I need to do this many things, it's like, or you can just start. Motivation doesn't show up before action. Motivation shows up after action. And so if you're able to take an initial action, motivation will and can follow you from there. It will not show up beforehand. If it does, it usually comes from an emotional standpoint of pain or something along those lines, and it's very, very short-lived. It might get you off the couch, but it won't be sustainable. You won't be able to sustain it. So don't start strong, start simple, because you can then finish strong. That's really crucial. Start basic and build, not complex and cut. The other key thing to look at here is ask the question, what's the first domino? And the reason why we think that's such an important question is we go, if I was to give myself the best chance of getting started on exercise, nutrition, making time for myself, creating a new habit, if there was one thing that kind of domino affected everything else, what would that one thing be? Is it putting my keys in my runner's shoes at the front of the door or by my bed? Is it um, you know, making a particular meal the night before and then leaving my keys on the meal? I don't know why I've gone to keys, but <laughs> it's just like you can't go anywhere without your keys, right? Is it, 
your ability to make sure that you are accountable to a friend for some form of yoga or mindfulness or something along those what is it for you what is your first domino based on getting momentum with where you want to go because it's not motivation we're after it's momentum momentum is the key not motivation that like that's the key shift the other thing is that boring is good if it's starting to become boring that's good you don't need to be entertained all the time the other thing with boring is that that's actually where your reps start at the start of the program or any program it can often often be quite um engaging it can feel like all right this is this is something that i can keep doing this is fun this is energetic all right let's go and that's actually really easy but as that starts to wear off that's where it actually really starts to count and so that's where your reps kick in it's the same when someone starts training and they start to get what co- people commonly call newbie gains they start to get strength gains in the early stages of training then the the st- the, the gains slow down. The, the reality is the gains don't slow down. The initial gains are actually neural adaptations. You're learning how to move easier and more efficient rather than trying to get like actual muscular strength. So you're actually just getting more coordinated basically. But after that stage, people go, my gains are slowing down. Let's shock the body again. Let's change things up. Let's do this. It's getting boring. Boring is actually pretty good. If you can find enjoyment in monotonous, boring stuff, then you're on a path of like, massive development long term and let me explain it this way people go oh but if it's boring i don't want to do it that's fine i get that i understand that majority people don't find great enjoyment in brushing their teeth yet they do it they do it because maybe the pain of not brushing their teeth maybe they don't want to go to the dentist maybe it's just part of their normal routine now but a lot of people aren't being like i can't wait to get home brush my teeth i'm pumped i'm amped i know someone's gonna listen to this be like oh that's actually me Yes, there's weird people out there, but my key thing in saying that is that it's just a boring task that we have to do. Washing clothes, boring tasks that we have to do. And when we start to actually kind of look at certain things like that, that they're kind of just neutral is actually what I'm getting at, not boring. It's really they're neutral, but we enjoy the people we're around. We enjoy the challenge of it. We enjoy the the learning that we get from it. Whatever the case might be, the after effects, that's fine. But when we actually kind of neutralize this, it's actually a really healthy approach. There's a beautiful quote, and I can't remember the guy who, who said it, but if we ignore the mundane, the sacred will burn us. And if we ignore the sacred, the mundane will wear us down. And so what's that saying there is that there is a lot of mundane week to week. And it's really, really crucial. If all we ever do is go after these massive, sacred, big events, big moments, we get burnt. But if we never have those moments whatsoever at all, the mundane fundamentally wears us down. We become very gray, very beige. We can commonly end up being very uninspiring or aspiring to be around, all of those sorts of things. So there is a beautiful balance here of mundane and sacred. And our ability to learn to enjoy the mundane. Because if we were to look at those moments, whatever the mundane moments are for you, a morning walk or whatever the case is, if we were to look at those with brand new eyes every single time, you will soon quickly realize that they are not mundane whatsoever at all that there's a lot of beauty that we're just missing out on because of our ability to run an automatic pattern, see things again and again and again, as if, here's a secret for you, right? This will tell you straight to the core. As we age, the days seem to get faster. And there's two theories why that is. One of them is because, well, one fiftieth is a lot smaller than one tenth. Fair enough. So the perception of time. The other thing is that there's a lot less new experiences. So our brain gets used to it, it speeds things up, we run on autopilot. Our ability to have new experiences or look at things as if they're brand new for the first time with a new lens as you are today can help us be present and slow down our life. It is crucial for our mental and physical, let alone social and environmental health. So find some enjoyment in the mundane. There is magic in the mundane, I promise you. And remember that if nothing changes, nothing changes. So what do we look at with this? Well, we definitely have to be paying attention to our mind and the method, the approach that we're going to look at. And one of the ways that we can start this halfway through this program, but this is something you could be doing every two weeks anyway, is review your dent goals. So what is my daily default? 
What is my every week, my perfect repeatable week? What's going to be my 90-day check-in? And I'm going to be, you know, two weeks close to that now. And then on top of that, what is my theme for the year? Does that need to change? Does my theme need to change? Has it adapted? Have I got more information and I need to tweak this? And feeding into that, do I need to review what my big why is? My big why is going to be a driver. It's going to help me go, I need to do this for this reason. And if you've ever found yourself doing something that's not fun, that you don't really enjoy, or maybe you do find it fun, you do enjoy it, you just don't feel like it. And you're like, ah, but if I don't do this, then X, Y, or Z. Like it's the question that comes up is why am I doing this? And you want to be able to have an amazing answer for that because that's going to be the fuel for your momentum. So review your dent goals, review your big why, put it in front of you. It doesn't take long. You can take 15 minutes for this, right? But it just brings it back front of cent- um, center of mind and, and front of mind. And so your ability to have it somewhere where you can see it, a mirror, um, you know, in a journal first thing, you, you have your morning coffee and you review it, wherever it is that you can see it's going to be crucial. From there, there's this beautiful concept that if you want to stay in love with your partner, you do the things that you did when you first fell in love. So if you want to stay consistent and successful with your goals here, you do the things that made you successful in the beginning. You bring it front of mind, you talk about it, you prioritize it, you prioritize you, you do all that sort of stuff. Keep dating yourself because you'll go through this and you'll get to the other side. The last thing that I'd offer you with this is a pretty interesting one. And this is from... From my memory, this is from Mr. Tim Ferriss, um, and it's called a to-don't list. Not a to-do list, you actually write a list of to-don'ts. And you do this after you do your goal setting. And so you look at your goals, and you look at your big why, and then you think about your, your last couple of days and what you've got coming up. And what you do is you look at all the things that do not align with those things. All the things that take away from those things, those goals, uh, your daily default, your theme for the year, whatever's taking away, that goes on your to-don't list. And you keep your to-don't list up somewhere where you can see it. Now you've got your goals, your driver, and your to-don'ts. This is your refocus. And if you do, if you actually follow through, and a lot of people won't, but if you actually follow through and do this, this is so fundamental to where you'll be in six months let alone six years and if you do that i promise you you put yourself in the best position to get your reps in and break free from whatever yo-yo and looping you've been doing and move to the next stage because you're capable you 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 know you can do that but you have to do it that's the beauty of it and on on that note team i am done thank you very much for tuning in if you enjoyed the podcast it would i don't know why i'm stuttering now if you enjoyed the podcast it would mean the world to me if you would share it with a friend that you think would also enjoy it if you want to learn more about the boss fit 30 programs and you're not on it yet you can find out more in the show notes uh, you can learn more about our immersions and all the other programs that we run uh, otherwise that's me done i'm out until next time peace and pizza i'll see you soon